After record-breaking turnout for early voting, the polls get ready to open on Election Day. How early we may see results and last-minute analysis. A return to virtual learning for many of the North County. The positive COVID cases that hit a local school district barely two weeks after returning to the classroom. ABC 10 News at 6 starts now. There are now just hours until the polls open in San Diego. Anyone who wants to vote in person on Election Day about to get that chance. Good evening, I'm Kimberly Hunt. And I'm Steve Atkinson. More than a million San Diegans have already cast their ballots either by mail at an official drop-off box or this weekend at one of the special polling places. Our ABC 10 News reporter Rachel Bianco is at the Registrar Voters Office, which may have results of those early ballots shortly after the polls close tomorrow. Rachel. You're right, Steve, and they actually extended the hours here, so the polls are just closing right about now. And even though more than half of the county's registered voters have already cast their ballot, whether it was by mail or in person, long lines are still expected here tomorrow, partly because of the need for social distancing. Sharon Morton wanted to vote in person, but avoid the long lines on Election Day. I wanted to vote early, but I wanted to come out uh, and actually see my ballot go in early today. Morton was in and out of the Registrar Voter Center in minutes. Other than some short lines to drop off mail-in ballots, the process seemed quick Monday afternoon. We are doing really well as far as the lines. It's been really peaceful. And yes, I was studying my ballot. For the first time ever, the county opened 235 super polling locations Saturday. Normally, there are 1,600 smaller locations only available on Election Day. One of the super polling locations is at San Diego State, the size making it easier for social distancing. The pandemic is my main concern. So far, a record number of San Diegans has voted early in person and by mail. This is also the first year everyone in California got a ballot in the mail. Election officials say we may have a good idea of the results right after the polls close. In 2018, the early numbers reflected just 33% of the vote. This year, it could be more than double. A million mail ballots is what I anticipate and tens of thousands of polling place ballots already in that first uh, set of results. That could uh, equate out to be 60 to 70% of the overall votes cast. It's a beautiful day. We're in San Diego. We have absolutely no excuses. Another live look at the Registrar of Voters where things are beginning to wind down. If you are voting in person tomorrow, election officials say filling out your sample ballot ahead of time will help uh, speed things up once you get here. And if you forget your mask, they will provide one for you. Reporting live in Kearney Mesa, Rachel Bianco, ABC 10 News. Everybody voting safe. Rachel, thank you. And joining us now to discuss the election is Dr. Kira Green with the Center on Policy Initiatives. Dr. Green, thank you for joining us, first of all. Now, we know that more than a million San Diegans, as we mentioned, have already cast their ballots. Part of the nearly 100 million Americans that have voted early. So today, both President Trump and Joe Biden focused their final pitches in crucial battleground states, Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania. At this point, is there really anyone still undecided or is this just about getting people to the polls? The push for both the candidates and their campaigns right now is definitely about getting people out to the polls. There simply aren't that many undecided voters. And on top of it, these candidates have been running for well over a year and making their case. There's little that they can say at this point that's going to sway them. No doubt about that. Turning to the San Diego's mayor's race, just yesterday, Republican City Councilman Scott Sherman, he endorsed Assemblymember Todd Gloria. So if we're talking about those last minute pushes, how much does this endorsement help Gloria with those conservative and independent voters here in San Diego? In a race as close as the one between Todd Gloria and Barbara Bray, every little bit counts. And this endorsement will probably help Todd Gloria with some independent and conservative voters. However, Barbara Bree actually has a very strong lead among conservative voters, and this endorsement would have been more helpful to Todd Gloria right after the primary where Scott Sherman came in third before conservative voters had made up their minds about where they might line up. It did come in late. Speaking of those two mayoral candidates, both are Democrats. The city council could have a Democratic majority by tomorrow. The Board of Supervisors could as well. So what does this say about how much our county has changed over the last few years? I think it says two things. I, I definitely think it speaks to change in this county. 
But I wonder also, as we look at the both the nation and the state of California, clearly the Republican Party is in decline in the state of California. And so I'm not entirely sure that this says as much about the change in the electorate as it does about the change in the Republican Party. We've seen elected officials um, and others change their registration to independent or Democrat. And when they do, they say it's because not that their politics have changed, but that their party has moved away from them. So I think it's that combination of demographic forces that are changing at the county, but also a Republican Party that's increasingly out of step with even California Republicans. And we'll see how it all plays out tomorrow. Dr. Green, thank you for your time. Thank you. So definitely it was a part of our family upbringing to go to the polls and to express our, our freedom through voting. I feel like voting is a big part of every you know, U.S. citizen's responsibility to contribute to our society. The reason why I will be voting in this election is because there's way too much at stake. And those are just a few of the reasons why many San Diegans feel compelled to vote this election season. And ABC 10 News is giving you several ways to see how your vote affected this election. Tomorrow, we will have wall-to-wall -wall coverage as results come in on Roku, Fire TV, Apple TV, on your computer or your phone. To watch, just download the ABC 10 News app or go to 10news.com. Many students and teachers in the Vista Unified School District are now back to online learning for two weeks due to rising COVID cases. As ABC 10 News reporter Mimi Alcala explains, 17 cases have been identified since schools reopened on October 20th. After reopening classrooms at full capacity, several schools in the Vista Unified School District are back to virtual learning for two weeks due to reported positive COVID-19 cases. He's about a week into his two-week virtual pivot. Dolly Golart has a son at Mission Vista High School. After he went back to in-person learning, also known as Vista Classic, his school later returned to Vista Virtual after two cases were identified on campus. I felt fairly safe all along the way. My family's taken our own restrictions. District Superintendent Dr. Dr. Matt Doyle says Vista Classic and Vista Virtual were designed to make it easy to move back and forth between the two. Vista High School along with Madison, Roosevelt and Rancho Minerva Middle Schools are also pivoting back to Vista Virtual. A classroom of 28 students and one teacher at the Leadership Academy Elementary School is under a 14 day quarantine. The district recently voted on new metrics for closing secondary schools. If one school has two or more positive cases, the whole school will shift to virtual learning for 14 days. If three secondary schools see one case each, they would have to do the same. I think two is tough. I think that um, doesn't give us a lot of confidence that it won't close down again. But I do appreciate everything that they're doing, trying to get classic families back in. They gave families a choice over the summer. Before schools reopened, the district was transparent about students being less than six feet apart in class. There's been mixed reactions from teachers and parents. The Vista Teachers Association says more needs to be done when it comes to social distancing. They're in crowded conditions. We hope to work with our district to create a system that keeps our schools open, not one that keeps pivoting back to virtual. Amy Alcala, ABC 10 News. The superintendent says in just a few weeks, a high volume COVID-19 testing center will open in Vista Unified. And after a slight uptick over the weekend, San Diego's 14 day rolling average for positive COVID tests is again curving down. Today, it dipped back below 3%. There were 307 new cases reported today. That brings our local total to 57,409. There were no COVID-related deaths reported this weekend. That total remains 891. There is a new open-air patio in Oceanside aimed at helping local restaurants serve more customers. Our partners at KPBS report the new Oceanside Fountain Patio is downtown just outside the public library. It was organized by Main Street Oceanside and funded by the city way they could order food from any restaurant around there and be able to do takeout and be able to sit at the fountain and be able to enjoy their meal there. Employees at Main Street Oceanside will monitor the patio during the day, cleaning and sanitizing the tables after each use. Only people with food will be allowed to sit there. The patio will be open Monday through Friday from 11 to 4. A possible arson suspect was arrested today after police say he set a fire inside a boat rental building. 
This happened in Mission Bay at Seaforth Boat Rental just before 2 o'clock this afternoon. SDPD says the man trashed a hallway area and then set a fire. Police say he went inside the bathroom and ripped things off the walls and barricaded the door. Officers had to breach the door and grab the man. No one was hurt. He was taken into custody. It is unclear if he will undergo a mental evaluation or go right to jail. UC San Diego is now about 2,000 students shy of the school's capacity after a surprising bump in fall enrollment. The UT reports the university had anticipated a loss in enrollment because of the pandemic, but actually gained more than 800 students. As part of a plan adopted in the last couple of years, the school placed its capacity at just over 42,000, but it didn't expect to reach that number for another 15 years. Right now, the school is building new residence halls, which presumably will increase student capacity.